Hello, glad that you are able to join us here at Speak the Word. I pray that you have been blessed as God continues to grow us together as we study the Word of God, as we take and, and look at the Word and in practical application become better and more dedicated saints to do His will. Before we go any further, I'd like to ask that you may, uh, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, please take the time to comment, like, share, and subscribe that we may continue to be able to support each other as we go forward. As we look at the thought of the week, let's pray for take the word and apply it in our lives. Thought for the week. When God bless you with a great blessing or when you have a great sense that you overcome a great victory in your life, what do you do after the victory? Sometime in life, God gives us what we want or that which we pray for. God comes in an overwhelming way and he gives us the victory. But after we receive the victory, where do we go from there? What do I focus? How do we handle life after the victory? Life after the great blessing? Life after we overcome? Life after the great healing? What do we do at that point? Today we're going to look at an individual that had to deal with a situation such as this. And as we look at it, let's think about how God has did a great blessing in our lives and how do we handle it the blessing or how we handle the situation after he blesses us. The lesson we're going to be dealing with is going to be taken from 1 Kings, the 19th chapter, verses 1 through 4. And the topic is going to be the storm after the victory. The storm after the victory. We'll be back with the word. And we're back with the word. The word will be found in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 4. And it reads as follows. It says, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a message unto Elijah, saying, let, let the, So let the gods do, what, do to me and more also if i had not um thy life as the life of one of them by by tomorrow about this time and when he saw that he arose and went for his life and came to bathsheba which also belonged to judah and left his servant there but he also went a day's journey unto the wilderness he came and sat down on a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die. And he said, it is enough now, O Lord, take my life for I am not better than my father. May God add a blessing upon the reading of his word. We want to speak to the subject of the storm after the victory, the storm after the victory. Um, in life, you may be into sports and you see great teams that go up and they have great success. Uh, even at the time that uh, they may become champions. But something weird happened after they have great victory. Many times you'll find that those teams the next season of the game after they have the great victory. Seem like they have a fall off or there's a vacuum where they seem to fall off. Many times in our Christian life, we find ourselves falling in the same thing, the same way that when God does something great, that we have a vacuum in our life. When we begin to falter, and we find ourselves not able to maintain at the level that we were. And it's not because of what the Lord is doing, it's simply because of what we are doing. And we look into the scripture today, we are looking at a character uh, um, who is named Elijah, a prophet of the Old Testament. 
Elijah was a great man of God. Um, we first showed up on the scene where that, and he uh, shows up at a widow's house and they didn't have food to eat in there. He told them to prepare a meal for him. And when they went back and the, the, the wine, the flour and the oil began to run over as they blessed because even though they were on their last meal, God blessed them. We find Elijah who found favor God and he went to King Ahaz, who was a weak God and a weak king. And he, he told him it time to get right with God. And if he didn't, that the rain would not come for three years. And there he went and in three years, it did not rain. And then he went back and told him that it will rain. And then this great victory where he went on Mount Carmel, there he confronted the false prophets of Baal, which was um, the queen prophets that she came brought with her, Jezebel, 400 of them. And, and there on top of Mount Carmel, they had a showdown. Uh, Elijah let them go first and they called up on the guard because the, um, the, the, the deal was that whoever, whichever God could rain down fire on heaven was the true and living God. The 450 began to call on the name of the Lord. As they called on the name of the Lord and they had no answer. Elijah began to pick at them around noonday and ask them, hey, uh, is your God asleep? Is he on vacation? Maybe he stepped out for a few minutes, but whatever the situation, you might need to call a little longer. And they began to call louder and they cut themselves and began to bleed, but yet their Lord did not call. Elijah goes and he builds an altar. And there he made a strange request. He tells them to build a ditch all the way around the altar. And there he began to pour water on top of the water, so much water that it drained off of the altar after it soaked in the ground and it filled the ditch all the way around. Elijah gets up and prays a simple prayer and fire comes down and it hits the altar and it's so strong that it actually soak up all the water that was in the ditch and on the ground and consume the altar. And there Israel began to declare that our God was the true and living God. At that point, the 450 prophets were killed right there on the spot. But, that, but now that Eli, Elijah had confronted Ahaz, the king, King Ahaz, who was the king of Israel, the king went back and spoke to the queen, Queen Jezebel, and told her what had happened, how that Elijah had sat there and he had called on the name of the Lord, how his God was the one able to rain down fire from him. He told him how that he killed the 450 prophet with the sword. Jezebel became angry and she sent a message to him, said, by this time tomorrow, if I haven't killed you just like you killed my prophet, may the gods have dealing with me. Now, this is strange that after Elijah had confronted the king, after Elijah had stood there before 400 prophets by himself, after God had revealed himself, it says fear set in on Elijah. And Elijah began to uh, run. He ran down to a portion of Judah called Bathsheba. That wasn't far enough. He left his, his servant that were with him in Bathsheba and he tra traveled another distance, another Father into the wilderness, a day's journey. And there on the juniper tree, and we know that this was more like a desert site type scenario because juniper tree only grows in a harsh environment. It's only a small bush, but yet he found shade. He found a little relief right there. And there under that tree, he was so oppressed that he asked the Lord to take his life. Sometime in our life that life can be so overwhelming, we find ourselves 
asking the Lord, or we, and even the devil may even confront us, or think thinking of taking su taking our lives, or, or, or committing suicide. And this is the point that Elijah was at, that he felt like from fear of the queen that he asked the Lord to take his life. There he fell asleep. There under that juniper tree, there in the hot sun where just a little portion of shade was, he fell asleep in fear of what might happen. The Lord sent an angel. Now, we need to put a pen. No matter what you're going through right now, God has help right there. God has some mean of getting you what you need to get out of the situation that you're into. The only thing we need to do is just trust God. And the problem with Elijah at this point is simple. And on my camera, he focused on the Lord. But then when he received a message from the queen, he was focusing on himself. I don't know what you may be going through right now. I don't know what storm you're dealing with. But in the midst of your storm, you must trust the Lord in all that he's doing. Because he has the answer. He has the provision. He has the way out. And the only way you're going to be able to survive what storm. Yes, this storm that Elijah gone is not one where it's raining and thundering at this particular time. But it is a storm. And a lot of times when we're facing storms in our lives, it's not lightning like it's outside. It's not thundering. And we not can't get wet from the rain. But there is friction in our life. There is trouble in our life. There is a disturbance in our life. And when that happened, that is your storm. Elijah is dealing with a storm, a storm that, is, that attacked him at his strength. Because when you looked at it, uh, Elijah has shown strong sign of courage, but now he's dealing with fear and he's running. He's on the run. Down there under the juniper tree, God sends an angel and he ministered to Elijah. He gives him food and he eat and Elijah falls asleep again and he wakes up. He tells him that's not, that, that's not enough. He feeds him again and Elijah began to do a supernatural run. The scripture said that Elijah ran for 40 days and there he found himself in a cave. In that cave, the question was answered, I will ask, Elijah, where did you hear my voice? Was it in the lightning of the that fell down from heaven? No. Was it in the midst of the wind that was blowing? No. When we're in our storm, we need to learn how to get in a quiet, still place. Because there in the quietness, in the stillness, in the cave, that's when God spoke to him. A lot of times we get so uh, overwhelmed there and so uh, we get bombarded by so many things, but we need to get in and as the old people say, in our secret closet, in that place where we can find peace, we need to turn off our cell phone, get away from our tablets, and walk away from the TV. We need to get in the presence of the Lord in that quiet, still place. And even though things are going on around us, in that quiet, still place, we can hear the voice of the Lord and he will give us instruction on how to survive. Yes, the storm is loud. Yes, the storm is is fearful. Yes, the storm attacks us in our sometimes our strong and sometimes our weakest point in our life. But when it attack, get in that place where you can hear the Lord. And when you get to the place where you can hear the Lord, then you will find your security. You will find your strength. You will find your guidance to get you through. Yes, Elijah was a great prophet. Yes, Elijah did great things. But just like us, he had to deal with his storm. And in our life, we got to deal with our storms. In our lives, when all this has failed, we got to trust in the Lord. In our life, it may seem like we're at our wit's end. In our life, it may seem like we're about to lose our mind. But if we trust in the Lord, the Lord will deliver. Yes, the storm may not be like a hurricane or a tornado, but sometime in our lives, we get those fierceness storm where the friction between good and evil is going on, where we have to deal with choices and we have to fight our way through. But in your fight, you're not alone, for God is with you. 
So after your great victory, take time to make sure you're doing the basics by focus on the Lord. Because I guarantee that behind every victory, there will be a storm. So get ready for the storm to come. Because as long as we on this side of Jordan, the storm will come, but we got victory over every storm. We will be delivered out of every situation. We can overcome every obstacle in our way if we just trust in the Lord. So let's get ready for the storms after our victory. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come right now giving you the praise and honor. We come thanking you, Father, for being so good and so awesome in our lives. We come, Father, realize if it had not been for you, we wouldn't be here. So we honor and bless your name because you are so good. You are so kind. You are so wonderful, God. So now we lift you up because you are so good. Father, we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, how you keep blessing us over and over again. Father, we want to thank you for your grace and mercy. We want to thank you right now for those that are going through a storm right now to let them realize that in the midst of the storm, you are there with them. Father, we know that when we deal with things, even though when we on our highest mountain, that sometimes the devil is plotting to bring us down to our lowest, our lowest valley. But if we trust in you, Father, if we keep our eyes on you, we realize that he can't keep us down for long because we have the victory and we're trusting in you. Father, we pray for those that are thinking about suicide, that are contemplating on giving up on life. And let them know that the best is yet to come. If they just keep pushing, they just keep pressing. If they just keep praying and they just keep believing and they just keep listening to you, that everything will be all right. Yes, Lord, we just pray right now in the name of Jesus for every saint to, to master the storm, to overcome the storm, to be strong in the might in the midst of the storms. Because we realize that even though we may have sunny days right now, but there are storms that are on the way. But we realize we have victory over every storm. And Father, let us re us be reassured that in the midst of the storm, not only do we have to go through our storm, but let us learn from our storms. Let us use our storm to take us to the next levels. Let us believe that the storms are there to make us better than where we were before. Father, we love you and we bless your name. Father, we just give you the praise because you are so good. And Father, we lift you up. And Father, we just thank you for this opportunity. And Father, for those that are lost and do not know you, we pray that you may touch them, that they may yield and surrender unto you, and that you may begin to minister to them and increase their faith, that they may be what you will have them to be. Father, we love you and we bless your name. And we pray this prayer in thy son Jesus' name. Amen. Until next time, let us keep striving to be holy and righteous in him. Be those a living example that God may, that when others see you, that they may see the God in you. And again, I'll speak the word. Be blessed. May God bless you and keep you. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with his seeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Speak the word, strive to be a holy according to God's word.